catch them in the pasture, run them in the pen, work them on the Sunday, do it all again, race them in the sand, buck them in the mud, drip a cowboy's sweat, bleed a cowboy's blood. I'm Zeke Thurston, 2016 World Champion Saddlebrock Rider, and you're watching the Pepper Stewart Show. Yes, yes you are, and I don't know why. You must be still on Corona time, locked in your basement, and forced to watch it, because that's the only way I would watch it. A lot of stuff's going on, a lot of stuff happened. We're still stuck in the uh, Corona time of 2020, so that's still a thing. Um, the NFR wrapped up here in or over there, right over that way, or that way, wrapped up in Arlington, put in Arlington, Fort Worth. They had a lot of good stuff happen. A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff took place over there. It was a great deal. It's a great deal. Uh, they even had the freestyle bullfights was over there. And they did say something on TV that did catch my attention, but it did make sense. They did mention that the, uh, the bullfights was the first time that a live, that had been live. The freestyle has been live on TV. And I was like, Oh, okay. I guess so. I guess that's right. It was TV because rewind 2014, we were live streaming bull ridings and bull fights all the time on Ustream, uh, which was a streaming channel back in the old days, back before, back before, uh, you know, Cowboy Channel, RFD, all the uh, streaming sites, we were there. We were doing that stuff. So I'm glad to have paved the way for the future of rodeo and Western sports. Good stuff. But anyway, got a lot of stuff on for you guys. We got a couple of good guests. We got a musician. Um, I believe we're going to have the most famous weatherman you've ever seen before. I'm talking, he's got, he's followed globally. And his, his uh, weather reports are genius and they are accurate. I mean, they're so accurate. And when he says something's going to happen, bam, it pretty much happens. So that's some good stuff. We're going to talk to them. Um, got some good odd news for you. Got some more, uh, some more good, good oddities because everybody likes those. So we're gonna get you, get you some of that. Um, uh, entertainment. We got a trailer for you. There's a new movie coming out. It's it's been held up for a while. It's gonna be coming out. So we got that. And um, along with movie releases, you've also got something that was released on uh, Blu-ray and DVD that you can now order up, and that is. The explosive third season of Paramount Network's Yellowstone is now on Blu-ray and DVD. The Western epic starring Kevin Costner is back for more dangerous and suspense on the American frontier. The Blu-ray and DVD come with all 10 episodes plus four hours of special features, including the making of featurettes, behind the scenes, never before seen interviews with the cast and crew and much more. You can own Yellowstone Season 3 on Blu-ray and DVD from Paramount Network and Paramount Home Entertainment. Or click Amazon. It's right there. Amazon's got it. So do it. Go get it. And if you've been watching on Facebook, we've been giving away some uh, collector sets of Yellowstone also. So don't forget that. Anyway, I've got something else. For you guys everybody's been asking about the birthdays like man you guys you had not birthdays in a long time we don't know when people are having birthdays so i'm like you know what i think i think we'll do that i think we'll throw out some birthdays for december now these are just just gonna be uh, birthdays that happen to be in the month of december some of these you may know some of these may not some of you've seen before i don't know because i don't even know who they are it's just a random list they gave me about 10 minutes ago. So we'll see what happens. Uh, December birthdays. You got Finn Wolfhard. He was born in 2002. He, he's Mike from Stranger Things. He's also on Ghostbusters Afterlife. So that's that's interesting. Uh, Ginger Lynn, born 62. She used to date Charlie Sheen. She was in a few notable films. A Coming of Angels. Got Milk and Love Letters. So check that out. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal got a birthday in December. He's an 80s kid or 80s baby. That's interesting. He was in The Day After Tomorrow, Nightcrawlers, in his most famous role ever in Brokeback Mountain. So that's interesting. 
And then we got one more here from 73, Tabitha Cash. I wonder if it's related to Johnny Cash. One of the Cash kids, I don't know. Maybe a grandkid. She's in uh, Fame Fatale, Sin City, French Moments, and Night Train. All right. And what else we got here? Okay, some notable things that happened in, De in December. In 1997, Titanic was released. Lord of the Rings was released in 2001, December. Deal or No Deal. That used to be a big thing. That premiered in 2005. And then the best one yet, I'm going to get you, sucker. 1988. If you hadn't seen those movies, check them out. Because you're going to want to. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take a break and come right back with some good stuff and probably have somebody on the line right there or there. We are back. We're back right here. We've got none other than the weather legend himself, Frankie McDonald. He's been around the globe. His weather reports are the most accurate reports I've ever seen. And every time something happens, I got to I got to check what Frankie's got going on because he's going to tell you. He's going to tell you exactly how it goes. And that's the man right here. Frankie, what is going on? Going to be a major snowstorm in Pennsylvania, New York, and Massachusetts on Wednesday. It's going to bring a lot of snow in Boston. Because in the nor'easter, it's going to hit the state of Massachusetts, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. And in Maryland, it's going to bring a lot of rain. Washington, D.C., Richmond, Virginia, it's going to bring a lot of rain. In the East Coast, of the United States, then it's going to bring a lot of Santa Ana winds in California. They had a 6.0 magnitude earthquake in Chile the other day. I predicted it way back in earlier in 2020. And that that's how, that's what happens. That is that's the man right there. So what what is going on up in uh, in your part of the country? Yes, I've been I'm located in Sydney, Nova Scotia, Canada, which is located located in eastern Nova Scotia, in eastern Cape Breton Island. Frankie and Dylan shows coming on January seventh at six o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's five o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Cable Fourteen website. All right, now you got you've got uh, you've got a book out. A book out. Can you tell me about the book? Be prepared to find out guide to life weather and everything. It was written by Sarah Soder, the writer of Nimbus Publishing in Halifax. Sarah Soder did a really good job writing my book. My book is uh, with Nimbus Publishing. It's located on Strawberry Hill Street, Halifax, Nova Scotia. All right. Now, you've got... I've, there's a lot of weathermen out there, but I've never seen a weatherman that had his own bobblehead and action figure how did that come about great so far yeah how, how'd that come about is that is that something that just popped up or are you ben came up Campbell with it? lives in your state he lives in big spring texas ben Campbell lives in the same state as you you know his facebook profile has some kind of dinosaur on his profile picture ben Campbell lives in big spring texas he's a designer of frankie mcdonald action figures all right. Now, when you when you started doing your weather reports and putting them on YouTube, did you ever imagine that you would have over 250,000 subscribers to your YouTube channel? Yes. People posted that on weather forums and Godlike Productions and things like that. People posted my videos on Godlike Productions. People posted my videos on Lunatic Post and things like that. GLP Lunatic Post in Texas forums and things like that and other forums. And people posted my videos on Reddit subreddit videos lots of people are going to post my videos on subreddit videos okay and what uh when you're not doing weather reports and you're not following the weather what do you do on your on your spare time before the pandemic i know i went to the movies and i went to the hockey games i went to, to the bars like dual lease the old triangle black diamond steel city in sydney nova scotia and daniels and y'all, is, is Canada still still locked down? And that means that this is a, a bottle-headed me. When I press this button, it's a... <laughs> where, where could you get these bobbleheads? Where, can you order these on Amazon? National Bowlheads Hall of Fame website. Okay, okay. All right. Do you, do you have anything uh, anything that you want to say to to your fans out there watching uh, watching today as as winter comes in? It's starting to get cold. It's starting to snow here in Texas. You I got want any to tips? Be 
fair, like order your pizzas and order your Chinese food, buy a case of Pepsi, buy a case of Coke. Do your grocery shopping, don't wait till the last minute. Do it right now. Make sure every Samsung Galaxy shirt, Samsung Galaxy smartphone shirt, Samsung Galaxy tablet shirt, smartphone, cell phone, laptops, tablet shirt, every 3G, 4G, and 5G LTE area ready as well. All right, Frankie. Well, I'll tell you what, man, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to visit with us, man, and uh, we you wish you luck. Follow- if you want to follow my social media, yes. follow Frankie McDonald on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and follow Frankie McDonald on LinkedIn, YouTube. Follow Frankie McDonald on TikTok and Snapchat. And did you hear both that I'm located in Sydney, Nova Scotia, Canada, which is in southeastern Canada, which is in eastern Nova Scotia, in eastern Cape Breton Island. Okay, thank you. We'll do it. Best of luck to you. I'm Frankie McDonald. You were listening to Pepper Stewart Show. That's some good stuff. If you don't know, if you don't know Frankie McDonald and his weather reports, he is he's he's won weather awards. He's won awards up there in Canada for his weather reporting and his uh his love of the weather. So he's always he's always pretty good and spot on on his reports. Speaking of reports, just happened. Carity.org, check it out. Carity.org. Spent some time over with them in Fort Worth at the celebrity cutting event. It was a little different than last year because it was Corona time. So things were different. Uh, A lot of the, a lot of the uh, folks from last year were there again, other than I thought Jimmy was coming. You know, I thought Jimmy was going to come defend his title. He didn't come. And uh, so in his place, they did have Jen Landon, Jennifer Landon. She was there. Uh, Taylor, of course, Taylor Sheridan was there again. Him and his wife, Nicole Sheridan, are the uh, co-chairs of the event. His wife, Nicole, she competed in the, in the event. Um, all the the interviews with the competitors, you can find those at Carity on the Carity.org, Carity Foundation's website under their celebrity cutting. They've got those uh, photographs and things. You can find some of that stuff on Pepper Stewart uh, show on Facebook. You can find it at Pepper Stewart TV on YouTube because we people always ask about YouTube, but we use YouTube for storage. All the videos we shoot, we load them on YouTube to store them, not necessarily share them, but at times people will find them and watch them. So that's what happens. So all the interviews are on there, but I've got a couple of highlighted interviews and I'm going to run for you guys right quick with uh, Nicole Taylor and Jennifer. And then when we come back, I'll tell you about that. All right. With Nicole Sheridan, part of the Carity Foundation. So what's it like to be part of this event? You, you guys have been here for a while, a couple of years. Mm-hmm. What's it like to be part of this event and be part of the Carity Foundation and what they're about? Man, it's just an incredible experience. I'm so happy and proud to be part of something so dear to my heart and many others. What a night. I just, this is like, I can't even, this is like the best night <laughs> of my life, by the way. <laughs> so I'm very short for words, but um, I'm just so thankful for my friends and family and other people that came and supported. Uh, Lynn and Beverly with Carity and um, could be more grateful. I still can't believe I, it's my first buckle I ever won. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like cloud nine right now. Yeah. But, uh, man, what a night. What are, what are horses involved with you, you know, day to day and, and working horses, riding horses, stuff like that? Uh, you know, we wake up, have coffee, and we ride pretty much every day. I love it. We have coffee, go on our little Uber trips with a bottle of wine. <laughs> and, uh, man, I, I love being horseback any second of the day I can. Yeah, okay. Yep. Okay. All right, <laughs> Nicole Sheridan here at Carity Foundation. <laughs> a great cause, a great event. If you don't know, now you know. Be part of it. She Thanks told, again, guys. She, she told you to. That's right. it. It was awesome.
the Carity Foundation. We visited with Taylor last year. He's been here a couple of years. You know, it's a great foundation. Been part of it a couple of years now. Well, you know, the first thing you need to do is, is create awareness and 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 because the compassion in people is inherent. And, and so we've done a few events. We did some in Weatherford, obviously, you know, bringing the cast and, and, and the energy that the Yellowstone has to Carity has helped create awareness there. And the goal is just to raise as much money as we can because they spend every dollar to make a difference. So uh, everything that I can do to facilitate that, I want to do. Yeah, well, the great challenge right now, you know, we have, we have a situation where we have a new illness uh, and that illness is affecting the way that, that people interact and, and it's affecting their daily lives. But uh, people still get cancer at a rate of, you know, 200,000 a month. And because people are scared to go to the doctor, uh, you're going to find a situation where you have a lot of stage four diagnoses that could have been stage three diagnoses because they're not going to the doctor because they're scared. So there's going to be a time coming here as much as everyone needs charity now, six months from now, a year from now, they're going to need a lot more because people are going to find themselves in a worse situation than, than they might have been in had they gone to their regular checkup, had doctors stop you, you being in situations where they could take regularly scheduled uh, clients. It, it, so it's a we got a plan for the future. And we've got to we've got to prepare now because there, there's as, as good as things are going as far as raising money and awareness we are looking at a situation where things are going to get worse and we right. have to be prepared you know we've heard that you know yellowstone is going to do a couple hours every week or an hour every week or it's nothing is going to change nothing you're going to get an hour every wednesday night for 10 episodes and then i'm going to make you sweat for nine months and then you <laughs> then you'll get 10 more right they're going to wait all right you heard it from the man with the plan he told you don't worry All right, we're here at the Carity Foundation. Jen is here, first year to be part of this event. What yeah. do you think about that? I mean, it was a rush. I had a lot of self pressure. You know, my coach is what is infamous, Lindy Birch. Mm -hmm. um, but she was amazing and it was a blast. And I, the fact that I get to ride horses for work and learn about this is amazing. What's it like being part of Yellowstone? You know, Yellowstone's been part of Carity, Carity for the last couple of years. Yeah. What's it like being part of Yellowstone and getting out there to do, to do stuff? I mean, you know, if you want to go way back to, you know, your father was in a lot of Westerns. Yeah. So how did that play a part into you jumping into Yellowstone? It's really interesting because Bonanza preceded my experience of him. <laughs> so. I watched Little House on the Prairie and Highway to Heaven, and I didn't watch Bonanza. I think because he didn't look like my dad to yeah. me. So when I got the job on the show, um, that's when I started finding out that my dad could actually ride horses and started going back and watching Bonanza. And so to be here, it's got, there's this tremendous synchronicity about the whole thing. And yeah. it's been a very, it's been a very emotional experience at times. Yeah. To, be, to be part of all this and, and, and getting to jump on Yellowstone and getting to be part of that. I mean, Yellowstone kind of come on the scene a couple years ago and nobody knew what was going to happen. And all of a sudden it's like, bam, everything Yellowstone everywhere. Yeah. So to be part of something is, has taken the world by storm. Mm -hmm. What's it like, you know, jumping into that and being part of it? It's incredible. I mean, people often are like, hey, so how did you just... You, this is your first acting job and I'm like no I've been working for 16 years it's just, yeah. just nobody knows <laughs> um, so to ha feel um, what's amazing about it is that often as an actor you don't feel like you're there is a feeling sometimes that you're not reaching anyone mm -hmm. or am I doing this for anyone besides me and the fans on this show are so giving and so engaging so mm -hmm. to really be able to feel like you're in relationship with the audience almost feels like a theater experience yeah it's been good for you. You like it, so I love it. You know, great event, great, great deal. You know, be part of Yellowstone, getting to you know throw back into the family mm -hmm. western stuff. So yeah, great deal for you. So it's amazing. We just you know wish you luck on you. upcoming season, and and Thank we'll just you. do like our best and watch see what happens. Thanks for letting me uh, learn how to ride horses. <laughs> yes.
and make a fool out of myself and oh, get a little better trying. Oh, you did great. Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Right there was a great a great event a good good event i don't know i don't know if i i noticed it watching these back but for some reason when i'm in an open arena doing interviews i've noticed this on all of them i feel like i have to scream into the microphone like i'm screaming into it we're out right here i don't know why i do that it's, i guess i feel like you're not hearing me i was like you're hearing me i got a microphone right there but anyway when that happens charity.org Go to the website. You can still make donations. They're still going to have a live auction. They've got a lot of stuff in the live auction. The silent auction is closed. They're still going to have a live auction. You can still make donations. A dollar, five, ten, twenty, whatever, whatever you feel, you know, the need to do. You know, if, if uh, cancer has affected you or your family in any way, uh, you know, throw a few, few bucks out because you know it's Corona time, so not a lot of stuff's happening. You know, the, a lot of the a lot of the resources and things that were there before are not there now, so. You know, it's, it's even more dire. Like, like Taylor told you, he told you about that. So I hope you like that with Nicole Taylor and Jen Landon. Michael Landon's a daughter, you know. If you don't know, now you do. So check him out, Yellowstone. She plays Teeter on Yellowstone. Uh, coming up next, I want you to check out this tune from Hayden Haddock. I want you to check it out, see what you think about this. And when we come back, we're going to talk to him. 2020 has been one wild ride for the Cowboy Chief. Well, there ain't a whole lot of sophistication There's a water burger and a gas station You can smell the smoke down a bare bones barbecue You gotta love it just to put up with the hundred degrees And the blowing dust, it's BFE With a whole lot of attitude It's just red dirt, Texas Sticks to your boots and sticks to 
Texas, leave and you'll miss it. Yeah, you'll come back around. Since that red dirt, Texas, blink and you missed it. Flat, broken, way too proud. Living paycheck to paycheck, raising hell and long necks. Someday. I hope you enjoyed that enjoyed that song that right there was a great a great tune from the man himself hayden had it we got him on here with us so let's jump into it hayden what is going on man not much how you doing just enjoying the uh the texas weather <laughs> yeah i don't know uh we're i'm down here in college station and it is raining and cold so i guess <laughs> if you like that but I've been out working this morning outside, so I, I'd prefer it to be a little bit warmer. But I'll deal with it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you're you're down at cost station, so you're you're at A and M. What are you working on there at A and M? What do you what do you study? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, majoring in construction science. So uh, it always throws people off. I guess they expect me to be majoring in something music related, <laughs> but nope. Started doing the the construction degree a little bit before I started doing music. So right, right. So, you know, so you always, you always got to have, you know, you, you don't want to just get stuck in one thing, right? You want to have options, do other things. You can. Absolutely. I've always said this music business is weird. You never know how it's going to go. So you might be hot one year and the next, no one knows who you are. So I figured I better have a backup plan <laughs> just in case. <laughs> well, it, it's getting hot. It's getting hot for you right now. I mean, you're, you know, doing about a hundred shows, I guess about a hundred shows a year, you know, all across Texas, other States and stuff like that. So how tell us a little bit about how you got started kind of where where you launched your music career right yeah um so obviously like we just said uh me going to a and m i got down uh here to college station for my freshman year and uh basically i learned to play the guitar when i was 14 but i never would play in front of family friends or anybody um i was just super shy about it and singing wasn't even in the picture um and basically got down here and i was talking to a young lady at the time and uh one night, her and my roommate uh, kind of teamed up on me and, you know, asking me to play a song. Oh, please play us a song. So we argued for about 45 minutes. I wouldn't do it. And uh, finally, I gave in and I was like, all right, I'll do it. So I played a Luke Combs song and, and sang, I think, about half of it. And um, without me knowing it, uh, my roommate recorded it and uh, sent it out to social media and some of my friends and family. And... Uh, I guess people said I wasn't half bad. And uh, so about a month later, I played my very first show and uh, been doing it ever since, coming up on about three years since that first show. So that's a, that's a good deal. Now, as far as your music, your musical style, uh, who kind of influences your, your style of music? Right. Yeah. Uh, so some of the, some of the modern, uh, I guess, artists that are kind of my biggest influence is, uh, you know, guys like Cody Johnson, uh, John Party, Randall King. Uh, guys that are really just kind of keeping country music country, as I like to put it. And I'm I'm sure, uh, I don't know how much you've listened uh, to my music, but, you know, if you know their stuff or whatever, it's kind of keeping that almost that 90s vibe into it. And obviously still keeping it modern enough to still work in today's world. But, uh, you know, and then, like I said, I grew up listening to 90s country. So some of those guys, uh, you know, Tracy Lawrence, Clay Walker, uh, dudes like that, of course, George Strait. Everyone says George Strait, so I was trying to be a little bit different. But uh, yeah, just a lot of that 90s stuff. Daryl Singletary, I love all that stuff. And uh, that's kind of my biggest thing is just trying to keep that sound uh, somewhat prominent in my own original music. Now, your your music is out. I guess you're, all, you're on Spotify and other, other sites, you know, with your music. How has, with everything going on right now with the, the corona time and all that, how has that really affected, you know, getting out and playing shows and, and being able to, to do music? Right. Uh, yeah. So I guess around that time of the, the first shutdown, which uh, I guess was March or something like that, somewhere around that time, uh, you know, we, along with 
for everyone else, I think, in the live music business, uh, we got shut shut down for about four or five months, and so uh, you know played zero live shows, and uh, really had to go to uh, um, doing all the live stream shows, kind of like this, but doing them on Facebook Live or whatever, and and that you know really became the norm, I guess. And uh, anyways, but then a uh, couple months ago, I guess it was, or maybe three months ago, when stuff started reopening a little bit, um, you know. We, along with other artists, I think, kind of made the choice that we had to get back out on the road. You know, this is our livelihood, how we make money. And, you know, my band, it's how they pay their bills and stuff like that. So uh, we kind of got back out there and obviously we're doing it as safely as we can. You know, we, we all get tests done every once in a while and wear our masks and wash our hands, all that good stuff. But um, it's just kind of one of those things where, I mean, this is our job. So we've, uh, we've been lucky enough to get out and be able to play some shows uh kind of coming up to the end of this year so now we're as, as far as getting out and playing what's where's a stage what's a stage that that you've got a a goal in mind per se a place that you want to play right um well i guess and i'm sure you've gotten this answer a lot but uh, you know green hall is one of those places i've been lucky enough that actually uh about three or four weeks ago we got to play there with jason bolin so i got to check that one off the bucket list and um, I've gotten to check off quite a few places, but one of them that I'm really still wanting to get into is uh, Flor John T. Floor's Country Store in Holotus. Um, that's just one of those places that's been on my bucket list forever, and uh, hopefully we'll get to play there soon. We're, we're done with full band shows this year, so hopefully uh, early 2021 I'll make it over there. <laughs> All right. Well, that'll work. So let's let's dive into some some odd stuff here. So during this, this downtime, did you catch yourself binge-watching anything, Netflix, or – absolutely yeah i kind of ran out of shows to watch um man i don't know we watched uh ozark uh that was a good series blacklist is my favorite series of all time so i'm but that one's you know i gotta wait for that episode to come out every week because i've already watched the rest of it um trying to think we just started uh Shit's creek that's a good show <laughs> um there's a few more i can't think of them but yeah we we went through i think about six six or seven different uh different uh, Netflix series. And then I've been watching all kinds of stand up comedy. So oh, yeah, there's been a lot of Netflix watching. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah. I think everybody's been stuck in that. I, th I think everybody kind of kicked off. I don't know if you kicked off like the rest, the rest of us, but with, the, with old Tiger King. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think I watched that the day it came out. I think I finished <laughs> it in two days. God, that was something. That was something. All right. When you're, when you're sitting back, y'all kicking it out backyard, whatever, grilling out, what are you throwing down on the grill? Man, uh, that's actually, that's like my second uh, passion is barbecuing and grilling. So I'll do, I do everything. I love doing ribs. Um, I, I do a brisket every once in a while. I'm still trying to perfect that. <laughs> uh, I'll do a pork butt, and then obviously we'll do grilled chicken. We're going to do some steaks tonight actually on the grill. So I kind of do kind of do anything on the grill. Do you have any particular, a particular wood that you like to use when you're smoking? Well, so I actually use, and you might say it's cheating, but I actually use a Traeger grill, so I have a pellet grill. Oh, and no. <laughs> I see you shaking your head. Oh, man. <laughs> but, they have, uh, but they have all the different kinds of pellets, and I normally just get the mesquite pellets. But, yeah, you sound like my brother <laughs> and my dad. They're like, because they use the, you know, the regular uh, real pit smokers, so yeah. they always fun of me but i'm like hey <laughs> it gets it done <laughs> <laughs> i've you know i've seen those i've i've never seen anybody use one but i've seen them and that's what i i was curious how that works is it is it the, the cook time still the same or is it shorten the time up or how does that it, work on yeah no it's roughly the same and obviously you can i mean obviously you know you can turn the temperature hotter if you want to cook it shorter or whatever but no it it ultimately is the same because my brother he like i said he's normally uses just the real pit smokers but uh he actually got my old Traeger grill from me. I got a new one. And so he just started using it. So he did like our Thanksgiving turkey on there and stuff. And he actually, he likes it surprisingly. Huh. Um, but yeah, you kind of, you cook it just the same. You just don't have to tend to the fire. So it's kind yeah. of a, right. I don't know. But some people like that, I guess. I guess that's kind of the enjoyment <laughs> to that. So Sitting out there in the smoke. <laughs> in the smoke. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Moving around and dodging the smoke. Oh, man. All right. So I, I tell you what, I guess we'll... We'll let the folks know they can check out your website. You got a lot of stuff there, you know, on your website, uh, HaydenHaddock.com. Uh, you got videos, you got music, 
places they can find you. And I guess your upcoming uh, 2021 calendar, you have that out there as well? Yes, sir. We have, we've got everything on my website, links to Spotify, Apple Music, uh, merchandise, everything you want to know about me will be on that website. All right. Well, Hayden, man, I appreciate you taking time to visit with us and uh, wish you good luck on the music road. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. 2020 has been one wild ride for the Cowboy Channel, the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo, a globe life field in Arlington, Texas. When the year started, you would never have dreamed that, but due to COVID and not being able to have fans in Las Vegas, Nevada, they gave them a hall pass, and we wind up in Texas for what turned out to be an incredible Wrangler National Finals. Yeah, what a spectacular spot to have the Wrangler National Finals. You know, the first day I walked in here and looked at Globe Life Field, it was like, holy cow. But I'm telling you, what a week it's been. All right, let's take a look at the world champions for 2020. The first one, pretty emotional. You got a guy chasing history, Casey Field. He joins Joe Alexander and Bruce Ford as the only Cowboys to ever win five bareback riding world championships. Yeah, that's amazing company. Casey just joined tonight. You know, I was so happy happy for Casey. He really worked at this. It's great to see him pull it off because it did not come easy. And how about somebody who probably didn't expect to win a world championship, but Jacob Ever, he just put the pieces together. He was so much fun to watch. Yeah, he was awesome to watch. You know, he was a lot of fun. He's exciting to watch and definitely did his part to win his first world title. That was amazing. Well, out of the average, not roping well, Colby Lovell, Paul Eves are pretty much dead. Nope, not at all. They win the last four rounds and they win the <laughs> world championship. Didn't even need any average dollars. No, you dominate and go around. You can make up those average dollars, especially if you start about round six so these guys put on a clinic paulie's did a great job keeping off those bucket shoots another world title for paul saddle bunk riding right and right wins his second world championship it took some work though white casper had a big lead and these guys went right down to the wire yeah they really did you know and then tonight what a finish what a great ride by Ryder. that was an absolute clinic he put on 10 rounds in a row at the range for nfr Tied on roping Shad Mayfield came in with a big lead. He had a pretty much a dismal Wrangler NFR. He won about $41,000. He winds up putting the world championship by just a few bucks. Yeah, just by an eyelash. And he knows that he wasn't happy with his performance here, but what a dominating year to help get him to that number one spot. He can be very proud of that world buckle. In barrel racing, Haley Kinsel came in number two, and I tell you what, she ran over everybody. She wins the Ram Top Gun Award. She wins the average in barrel racing, and she wins her third straight world championship. You know, it was great. She and Brittany Posey Tanazi. They were pretty neck and neck going into round five, and all of a sudden she just started putting everybody in her rear view mirror and won so many go-around sister. That's an awesome horse. You know, there was a time in late August, I didn't even think Stetson Ryder was going to make it to the Wrangler NFR and bull riding, and he got his act together. He put on a show over the last 10 days. He did, and, and he woke up at the right time, you know, made it late in the bull riding, made it even later in the bronc riding, and just performed so well once he got to here. You know, the momentum swung his way, and he took advantage. Yeah, of history was made, right or right, and Stetson right. Brothers winning two different events at the same Wrangler NFR, and of course Stetson, he wins a second all-around world championship. Well, I knew when he made it the Bronx ride, he was going to seal the deal on the all-around because I knew he was going to win his share of the Bronx ride, and absolutely did. Look out, he's just getting started. He may win the Bronx ride world title before his career is over as well. It was historic. Globe Life Field, so much fun. We'll see you in 2021 on the Cowboy Channel. historic event for sure right here in texas now 2025 when it comes back up for for bid again i'm guessing that texas is going to have a little bit more uh information this time than it did last time whenever it was up for renegotiation for the national finals but it ended up being good even though it was limited capacity between fort worth and arlington they got it done as you heard stetson Wright. Got it done. He won the all around. Because if you, I don't know if you guys listen to uh, Law Dog Sports on KCY out of Seymour. I do the, uh, uh, I guess, bi weekly rodeo reports over there. And they were talking about uh, Tough Cooper going to take the all around. And I was like, nah, I don't think it's going to happen. It's going to be Stetson Wright. Who was right? Me. I was right. Stetson Wright. So good deal. But check out Law Dog Sports. Check them out on uh, KCY AM out of Seymour they're on I think they're on SoundCloud and other places they do Facebook live stuff so check them out check them out check them out but check this out some odd news for you we got a couple of these we got one I should have asked Frankie about this this one's in Ontario it's in it's in Canada should ask him about this but there was a lady 
who was fed up with the porch pirates taking all her boxes. Every time she'd get a, a package from uh, Amazon or somewhere, they'd come steal it. So she got an idea. She decided to use her Amazon box as a litter box. So she filled it up with cat poop, put it on the front porch, and within 40 minutes, it was gone. She'd had several packages disappear from the porch for the past three years, so she decided she would try a little bait box and see what happens. She lives on a very busy downtown street, and the front door is pretty much open onto the sidewalk. So all of she's had numerous packages stolen since so she's lived there. Uh, as a result, I have a very clear label for all my Amazon packages, indicating they should ring my video doorbell. See, a couple of the carriers from Amazon uh, almost never read the label, so that's why they get stolen. Says she's captured the thief on video and neighbors identified the culprits as the same person who'd been swiping packages from their porches too. So, porch pirates, beware. You may be getting a poop box. Let's go to Scotland. Scotland. A Scottish couple said they were shocked when a plastic bottle their dog found at the beach turned out to be a message in a bottle that traveled 2,000 miles from... Canada. We should have done these stories with Frankie because this is his area, his expertise right here. It's his country. Sharon and Michael said they were walking on the, I don't know how you say this beach, on the Isle of Bar. Dang it, Frankie, what is this? Try us, say, try us, say, try, I don't know, try us, say, yes, I don't know what that means. I'm confused. But it's an island of Barra. Or maybe I said that wrong. When the dog grabbed the plastic bottle out of the surf, they opened it up, discovered a handwritten note that was dropped into the ocean off Newfoundland, Canada. And the message said it's, it's uh, Kaya and her uncle Kurt is writing this letter hoping that someone will pick it up and see how far it travels. This is the latitude and longitude where we dropped the bottle from our fishing boat. We live in a small community named Reefs Harbor on the northern peninsula of Newfoundland, Canada. The couple says the family got in touch after seeing their post about discovering it on social media. Uh, the young lady's grandma, who's a, commu a community nurse in the area of Reese Harbor, contacted them and then told the press about it. So that's how they found it. That's uh, quite the journey. Quite the journey. This one, this one you got is good. This reminds me, back in the old days, when I was young, I guess that's really old days, uh, my sister left to go to Oklahoma. She took off to Oklahoma. She had goldfish. She's like, hey, be sure and feed my goldfish. I'm like, okay. She left. We took the goldfish and dumped them out in the in the pool or the pond or the tank, wherever wherever you're watching or listening from, that's where the cows drink. Stock pond, whatever, however you say it in your area. Well, anyway, we just dumped them out. Well, we had catfish in there, so every now and then we throw dog food out to feed the catfish. And a few months later, these huge goldfish would come up to eat the dog food. And I was like, holy cow, those things got huge. So it makes you wonder that the goldfish you have in the tank, they grow to the size of their surroundings, apparently, and they can get big. So this is what happened here. Park officials in South Carolina shared a photo of a massive nine pound goldfish found by researchers doing fish population survey of the lake. The Greenville County Park said the usual, usually large goldfish was found swimming in Oak Grove Lake Park in Greenville during the survey. People who oversee the park posted a photo of the fish on Facebook. Anyone missing their goldfish? This nine pound fish was found in Oak Grove Lake during some recent testing of our lakes. Um, so yeah, they can grow. Those suckers get big. Speaking of getting big, something else happened near me. Um, yesterday, day before, uh, a couple of years ago, I'm trying to remember how, how long ago it was, maybe a year or so, something like that. Anyway, they released some, they released some mountain lions out in Hunt County to help combat the wild hog problem. So mountain lions evidently eat wild hogs. So they let some out. Well, I guess I was mowing, I was mowing a pasture, a lease pasture I got. And over in the corner, I'd seen something that would come out to the edge of the trees and kind of sit out and look, and you'd see it. I was like, it looks like a big cat, but they can't be a big cat. And then you'd hear some noises, and it's like, that doesn't sound right. Well, anyway, apparently what I'm thinking happened was that there was a mountain lion with cubs there because they were there for a while, and also they were gone. I never seen them again. And I was always real cautious when I was going over there because I didn't know what it was. And 
the night because the neighbor down the down the road from us had claimed to seen one he said it was this huge tiger which i guess was the mountain lion that grabbed one of his goats and jumped the fence with the goat in his mouth and so i saw a picture of that and i was like oh that's kind of like what i seen out in the pasture well, anyway um one was picked up about two or three days ago um not far from our place so i'm just thinking well yeah that's probably probably what i saw which was kind of make you wonder you know so makes you wonder about that but speaking of wondering let's wonder about this warner brothers announced the release of its repeatedly delayed comic book adaptation wonder woman 1984. Um, it was supposed to have been released in june but corona time wrecked that deal so now the movie is going to open up in international theaters or it opened it opened in international theaters december the 16th depending on what day this is and uh it's going to release in the us of a on december the 25th in theaters and on hbo max so check this out This world is not yet ready for all that you will do. Your time will come, Diana. And everything will be different. Citizens of the world. I'm here to change your life. Anything you dream of, you can have it. You look like you saw a ghost. Diana, look at you. It's like not one day has passed. I don't want to be like anyone. I want to be an apex predator. You've always had everything. While people like me have had nothing. Well, now it's my turn. Get used to it. I've never been one for rules. The answer is always more. Why? They will never find us. I forgot to tell you. What? Radar. Will they will they shoot at us? Barbara, what did you do? I'm not so keen on this one, I figure uh, you are, but you know what? I'm ready to go. I think we can do better. Parachute pants? Yeah. Um... Does, it, does everybody parachute now? 